The Stasis Warlock in Season of the Witch has to be the best version of a stasis lock that I have ever seen. It has always excelled at crowd control and freezing entire rooms of enemies, but this season it got a couple buffs, and we can actually add damage to the build for once to make it the best of both worlds. We combine several different subclasses like Strand and Solar to make this build put in some serious work, and way more than it's ever been able to do. And I think you guys will really be surprised with how this build performs for you. Even the Stasis Titan has got a lot better this season, but I'll save that for another video. I know a lot of you have asked for that one. Now there are three key things that we need to cover in order for you to experience this build at its full potential, and these are all really important, so listen up. The first thing is weapon choice. We want to take strand and solar weapons to make this build into something special, and there are two different ways to go about this. You either take a very strong strand weapon that will do the bulk of the work for you, or a very strong solar weapon as your main, and then the secondary strand weapon as a way to just apply debuffs. So for me personally, I found the best route to take a strand weapon as my primary because I have just been playing with Sunshot way too much this season. So I would go with Quicksilver Storm like you're seeing in most of the gameplay. It hits like a truck, and when you pair our freezing capabilities and freeze a ton of enemies, the grenade launcher form can clear out mobs of enemies at once and really makes you feel powerful when this happens. Some other honorable mentions for strand weapons are the Navigator. I actually used it to run a full coil, and being able to apply Woven Mail and also Sever on high health targets were great, and that's on top of everything else we're already doing. So if you have this weapon, try it out. And then I also use the Final Warning, that's a great option, and it's anti-barrier. And then a great legendary is Rufus's Fury. Now that we got the weapons out of the way, let's talk about two fragments. Because you need to choose between 45% more damage or 40% more survivability, based on the activity you're doing and how you play the game. The other three fragments will stay the same, and the fourth is chosen between Whisper of Chains, that grants us 40% damage reduction when we're near Stasis Crystals, or frozen targets, so you should have this up all the time, and then Whisper of Rending, that allows our primary weapon to hit frozen targets 45% harder. So on something like the grenade launcher form of Quicksilver, you are doing massive damage to anything frozen. So in easier activities, I would take Whisper of Rending, but in harder activities, I would switch to Whisper of Chains. But I'll leave the final decision up to you guys, since you should play Destiny whichever way that makes it the most fun for you. And the last thing that really impacts our overall build is the artifact mod choices. The first two are the stasis mods called Pillar of Ice and Hail of the Storm. What these do is cause our shatter damage from frozen targets and stasis crystals to hit much harder. I believe this is about a 15% damage buff for both, so it just adds overall damage to the build. And then when we kill encased targets, they will spawn a stasis crystal for us. This is huge, especially for a stasis warlock, because now we have a way to spawn crystals without using a headstone weapon or the glacial grenade, and we could choose a different weapon like Quicksilver to play into the strand aspect. So it's very nice. The next two mods are Unraveling Orbs and Horde Shuttle. When we pick up an Orb of Power, and we're going to spawn them super easy with the gameplay loop that we're going to go over, this allows our Strand Weapons to apply the Unravel debuff, which again is just added damage on a target. And while we're damaging a Unraveled target, Threadlings will pop off them, and either damage that same enemy or seek out another. Once again, this is just more overall damage to everything. So these two strand mods and the two stasis mods all combine together in any stasis build, if you're playing it right, to add some crazy damage overall. We also take the two solar mods for Radiant and Scorch on solar weapons, but these aren't as important if you have chosen the strand route as a primary. But if you are using something like the Navigator, for example, like I was, or this season's new strand fusion rifle that can actually get like the new sever perk on it, then I went with a secondary like Xylu's Bane, a strong solar primary, and I would have Radiant up quite often often for my weapons and also Scorch within the build. Then I would switch to my Fusion Rifle or the Navigator to apply the Strand debuffs and buffs and go back to my other normal weapons of what I'm doing. Now for the two aspects on the build, we are going to take Ice Flare Bolts, which just allows shattering frozen targets to spawn Seekers that track and freeze other nearby enemies. This just adds to that crowd control of the entire build, and this is one of my favorite aspects in the game. And then Bleak Watcher, so we can convert one of our grenades and make them into a Stasis Turret. I actually really don't use the Bleak Watcher that often. I like Cold Snap and just freezing enemies instantly and destroying them. I don't like the time that it takes for a Bleak Watcher to do it, but in more difficult content with champions, and if your team is struggling, Bleak Watcher is very great. Now we already went over choosing Whisper of Chains or Whisper of Rending, and the other three fragments you want to add into the build is going to be Whisper of Refraction, so defeating slow to frozen targets 
Rifts grants you class ability energy, we're defeating so many frozen targets that your Rift is going to be available all the time. And we do want that Rift available, because that's just like guaranteed restoration that you can sit in. And if you pair that with Whisper of Chains, then while anything frozen around you or Stasis Crystal around you is giving you that 40% damage reduction, those two combined is what your main survivability is going to be. In a Rift, with your damage reduction procced and working. And then the last two fragments are going to be Whisper of Fissures. So this increases the damage and the size of Burst of Stasis on any of those Stasis Crystals we destroy or Frozen Targets we defeat, and Whisper of Shards. Shattering a Stasis Crystal temporarily boosts your grenade recharge rate. This will go up to 10 seconds, and this grants a 500% increase for our grenade recharge. And this is just free from the Artifact mod, since that's what creates our Stasis Crystals, so just great. The exotic we're choosing is Osmiomancy Gloves. It's the number one pick on a Stasis Warlock, and it still is the best. This just allows your Cold Snap to chain in between enemies and give us grenade energy in return. And it gives us an extra charge of our Cold Snap grenade. The Seekers that also come from it travel much further. But this is just free grenade energy, and on higher tier targets, you get a ton of grenade energy back. So you need no mods whatsoever to add to your grenade recharge. Like, I'm not joking, Osmiomancy Gloves does it on your own. Which means all the rest of the mods in the build we can take to make things much better. On our helmet, you just want to make sure you have a Siphon mod on for Solar or Strand, whatever weapons you're using to spawn Orbs of Power. On the Gauntlets, the only important mod there is Bolstering Detonation, grants class ability energy when you deal damage with a grenade. And since we're always throwing these grenades out, this will proc for us every seven seconds. You don't get a ton of energy back, but it's well worth it for how many times your grenade is tagging people. And yes, when your Cold Snap does free something that is technically causing damage. Your chest piece is just your damage reduction, and then your boots is gonna be better already. So our health begins to regenerate when we pick up an Orb of Power, and two Strand Weapon Surges to give us a 17% weapon damage boost on our primary weapon. On the class item, we take Reaper, and elemental time dilation. Reaper to spawn an orb of power when we use our class ability and then kill something with our weapon, and time dilation to extend those surges on our boots. Now the overall gameplay loop is very simple. Just enter a room, drop your rift, throw your cold snap grenade. You've then activated Reaper, kill the first frozen enemy you see, the rest of the chain of cold snap will chain and freeze everything, and pick up the one orb of power that you created from Reaper. Then just throw your grenades and keep using that primary weapon, and you'll freeze everything, shatter and explode it all, and then also add in the unraveling and threadlings coming from everything from your strand weapon. And then you should have your rift coming back super fast, drop it again and repeat the cycle. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you give this build a shot. I think you'll really enjoy it, and it is the strongest I've seen a stasis warlock. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.